Hello and welcome to the third video that I'll be posting on my Java tutorial series. And in today's video, we are going to talk about if statements. And if statements are very important when it comes to programming because that's the basic core of all the logic that you'll be finding and experiencing yourself in your programming journey. And I'm going to talk about the comparing operators found in if statements as well as the user input that we can implement inside of our Java programming. And I'm not going to talk about making the objects and packages for those of you who already know this. In today's video, I'm just going to talk about the use of the user input as well as ways to create them. But I'm not going to be discussing more on object creation as well as importing packages because those topics will be covered up as the series progress. So the first thing that we're going to do, as usual, is going to open up uh, our Visual Studio Code. And as I've said before, it's always best to make a new file. So we're going to do that. We're going to wait for it to load for a second. And, and then we're going to click on our new file. And for this video, I'll name the file if statements. Because, well, it is an if statement. And if you made the file just like this, remember that it has to be with a .java at the end because that would tell us that the file is a Java file and the computer will also know that it's a Java file. So we're going to type in our usual public, public class if statements and then we're going to open our brackets and then as usual type in public static void main string and then we have the square brackets args curly brackets and as we've discussed before this is used to run the program now for our if statement in java or in many programming languages there's always three types of if and that includes give me a second let me write that down using the multi-line comment types of if statements okay we have the first one which is an if the second one which is an else if and the third one which is an else and whenever we're dealing with an if the if is written down somewhat like this if and then we have the statement and then we have the brackets and then i would click enter here and then the shape or how the if statement will look like will look something like this. And then this applies as well for else if and else because you just need to type in else if and then you have the brackets here and then you're going to put in your statement and then curly brackets at the end and then click enter and you have your shape. And for else, if we compare if and else if, we can see that both of them have the curly brackets. And they also have the brackets. In else, we just have the curly brackets. So we're going to type in else and then curly brackets. And each of these if statements are different from one another. And they essentially have different purposes. For the first if or our normal if, we use it for the first condition. And then if we have a second condition, we usually use else if and if you are having too many parameters we are going to use the last if which is the else here and this else has no statement or condition here inside of the brackets because else will always activate when if and else if doesn't activate so if if and else if don't activate or the conditions haven't been met or it doesn't run then else will run and I know it's a bit confusing now, but once I teach you about the comparing operators and uh, and give you examples about the uses of if, else, if, and else, it will become much easier to understand. So for now, just know that there's three types of if statements. And then we can start 
our next topic which is comparing operators and let me just type that down for a second there's a total of six different types of comparing operators and each comparing operators are used inside of the bracket here or to replace the statement and the reason why they are used to replace the statement is because in coding you need to have logic and this comparing operators right here is what makes the logic essentially and like it seems suggests it's comparing operators which means that it compares a value with another value i hope that clears things up and let's start discussing about comparing operators so there's a total of six which includes of course our equals equals which is indicating equals to and in a statement we type it in like this value equals equals to value and then for number two, we have not equal, which is indicated with the exclamation mark and then equal sign. So this means not equal. And then in a parameter or in an if statement, we write it down like this value not equal to value. And then for the third one, we have the greater than sign which is indicated with this symbol right here and then the name of this operator is greater than and in an if statement it will be written as value greater than value and then number four we have the less than sign which indicates less than and then in a if statement it's going to be written down as value value number five we have the greater than but we also have the equal sign at the back which means that it is greater than or equal to and in a if statement it will be written down as value value and finally we have the last one which is less than or equal to and it is written down like this and notice how the equal sign always stays at the right position and this symbol is always in the left either it's greater than or less than it is the same it has to be at the left that is a note and that is all for comparing operators. So now with all of the concepts already in mind, I can start showing you the actual use of ifs. So for instance, we're gonna make a variable, an integer variable, int variable one, and then we're gonna assign the variable with a value of two, and then we have another variable, and then we are going to assign it or assign that variable with the value of five. And then let us try to make a if statement. So let's just say if two or variable one is, let's do a true first. Variable one statement, and the statement can be from comparing operators. So if variable one is what? Let's just say, greater or less than less than if variable one is less than variable two which is true because variable one is two and variable two is five so if two is less than let me comment this for a second if if two is less than five then this happens and for your information Everything inside the bracket will activate, just like almost everything in programming, where as you can see, this code here has brackets and everything inside of the curly brackets is what runs. So that also applies for if statements. So anything inside of the curly brackets right here, here code will run. Okay. And in the curly bracket, in the brackets, sorry, not curly bracket, in the brackets, we have the statement and the statement is what defines whether or not the if statement or else if will run and 
if the statement is true, remember back in the variables video where we talked about boolean and how boolean is a true or false statement. So if the statement is true, then the if statement will run the code inside the curly brackets. So in general, when we're talking about if statements, the statement inside of the bracket here must be true for it to run. So in this example, of course, we have two is less than five, which is true. So it will run the code inside of it. So let's just do something usual, which is system dot out dot. Sorry, system dot out dot print line. We're just gonna say two is less. Sorry, I have a quotation mark inside of there. Two is less than five, and then always end with a semicolon. And if we click run right now, we should see two is less than five printing out. As you can see here, the variable or the if statement here actually activates or is triggered because two is less than five. And this statement here says that it's true because two is less than five. And then what happens if the bracket inside of it is true the inside of the if statement or anything inside the curly brackets is activated. So let's do something different. What happens if we have an if statement that's false? So let's just say if variable one is greater than two. So if two is greater than five, then this will run. But two is never greater than five, right? Because two is not greater than five. So it will not run. As you can see here, nothing is printed out. And for your information, a tip when programming is, as you can see here, this is what indicates once the code is finished running. So if you have this at the end, that means the code has already run everything inside of this public static void main. So in this case, we have nothing. Meanwhile, if we use two is less than five, we can see that it actually prints out. So that proves that the statement must be true to mm -hmm. actually activate everything inside of there. So this also applies for else if. So I'm just going to type in else if variable one is greater than variable two. Sorry, variable one is less than variable two. Then we have system.out dot print line let me just copy paste this because this is the true code for this one and then since two since variable one is greater than variable two so i'm just gonna type in two is greater than five so if you click on actually before we click on it let me just reset this terminal by killing it and then opening it again as you can see two is less than five. And this runs because this statement right here is true. But of course you already know that because I just explained that before. But now you're wondering why is there the use of if and else if here. So if is like the basic form of if statements. And then everything that happens simultaneously and you don't really care on what order they activate as long as the parameters or statement is true, then use an if. But an else if right here is something different. An else if cannot be written down directly. Like I'm going to show you right now here. I'm going to comment this right now. I'm going to type in else if directly. Else if. And then we're just going to say three, three, two, and then that for your information you don't really need this to be a, a variable you can also use a number but you know as your logic begins to expand you need to make sure that they are variables because in some situations these variables are what the computer knows and remembers so if you want to pass on data you need to do this with variables but for demonstration purposes and explanation you can also use numbers as you can see here else if cannot be activated and that is true because 
you know the word else else is something else right so it must be if the first statement doesn't activate then this statement will activate because if this doesn't activate then what else can activate this else if statement so the point that i'm trying to say is that the first if is always activated whenever you just want a statement to be true it wants to be activated directly so you don't really care about the order and then if you have a counter opposing statement for this if statement you can use an else if because if this code doesn't run then this must run get it so even though this statement right here is true but then this statement runs first the statement will not call because it's an else if so it's just like a contingency or a backup for the if statement so if the if statement doesn't run the else if can you know give it a try and check the statement if the statement is true it will run but if the statement is false again like variable one is let's just say again greater than variable two which is false of course because two is never greater than five so we're just going to click on run and as you can see here two is not or this else if is not activated and it's true because two is greater than five no two is never greater than five it's always five greater than two because two is smaller than five which is why this else if here doesn't activate because even though the if statement doesn't activate the else if will just give it a try to check if the statement is true or not if it's false then it won't activate because it's still an if so it follows a flow where the if will go first and then if it fails then there's an else if and then the else if will try okay let me try check if variable one is greater of course in this case variable one is greater than variable two if it's not then well it won't run and that brings us to the last type of if which is else and else here is very unique because else doesn't have the statement bracket here where we can or bracket here that contains our statement it's just an else curly brackets curly brackets and this tells us that else doesn't need any statement to run else will always run at the end of everything so let me just type in system the out of print line um the final if statement has appeared so as i've said before else if is like a contingency for if this if statement fails to run then the else if will give it a shot and see if his statement is true or not and then if it's false again it won't run again and here comes else else doesn't need a statement which means that it will always run but it will always run at the end so after if fails to run else if fails to run else then runs but if you know what before i continue let's just try to run the code first so that you can get a picture of what's happening right now as you can see here this doesn't run because this statement is false and as i said before if inside of an if statement the statements must be true so that the code here will run same goes for else if but else will always be true and will always run but always come in this order so as you can see here if variable one is greater than variable two which means two is greater than five that's a false so it doesn't run this code right here and then okay so if false if if fails then else if will run and inside of else if it's gonna check again okay let's see is it true no it's false and then it doesn't run this code and then it goes to the else and the else doesn't have any condition or statement which means that it will always be true and it will activate if both else if and if fails to run now you might be wondering okay then what happens if the if actually successfully runs first if we say that the if will run first of course this is just a statement that i chosen to print out but doesn't necessarily mean it's correct 
So if variable 1 is less than variable 2, or variable 2 is greater than variable 1, then 2... Wait, let me just change this here. If 2 is less than 5, because that's what's happening right now, then it will print out this. And as you can see, it printed or outputs this, this same text, which means that it actually runs. And since if runs, then else if doesn't get a shot to try it. And then since else if doesn't run, else will not run. So the logic is just like this order that the computer will always run into, which is always prioritizing if first, and then else if, and then else. So if we were to try again and just change that back to a false, I'm just going to change, remove that. Else if, and then we just try to do this. If we try to do this, if fails to run, and then else if get a, gets an attempt to try and check if his statement is true or not. And apparently it's true because 2 is less than 5, and it prints out the text. But... Or else, it's another different story. The else doesn't get a chance to participate in the checking or actually print out his line of code here because the else if already printed out first. So basically, if, else, if, else are very related to one another and they're just essentially backing up each other. So the if will try first, then else if will back up if, if, the if fails, or the statement is false, and then if else if fails, then else will get a try, and else will always activate, because there is no statement. And let me just comment this. I am going to talk about what happened if it's an if and an if. So if we try again and type in if and if, variable 1, variable 2, and then we're just going to say system dot out dot print line second if is called and i'm just going to change the statement here to first if is called okay so it's easier to understand which is being called right now let me just kill the terminal open it again okay as you can see Second if is called. And you might be wondering, wait, wait, wait. I thought we can only use if, else, if, and else. Well, in Java, the order is if, else, if, and else. And you can put more else if than others. Okay, we can you can put in a lot of else if. And it don't and it doesn't matter because this will be prioritized and this will be checked and then oh okay, else if fails. So this else if will get an attempt to check if the statement is true and then you can essentially put as much else if as you want and it doesn't really matter because it's just if the previous code or previous else if or if fails to run then this next else if or below else if will run but else can only be called once because well it's an else and the else is the final argument the code will have so you should always uh, try not to use else too much because if you do not count for many for many um, variables or attributes that's gonna affect your calculations you can use else of course but sometimes people don't want to use else that much because else can even trigger if none of the if statements are activated so what I'm trying to say is, else can be dangerous, especially if you don't account a lot of the statements so that your code can properly run. Anyway, as you can see here, if we have two ifs like this, the code will run. And the reason why it will run is because when you have an if and an if, instead of having to look at an order, the computer, like I said before, will only look at the if statement that is true. So if we just say both of them is true, like this, unlike the else if, where it will stop and don't print anything, as you can see, both of them fires because they don't follow the order where 
if and then else if and then else. So if you use if and then if, or you have a lot of if, they will directly fire and the, and the computer won't stop doing or processing the command because it's an if and an if and the order doesn't matter any longer where if is much more prioritized than else if and then else if will be checked and then oh if else if fails then it will be checked by an else if again or else and yeah if you have an if and an if the computer will say oh okay this is correct and then oh another if and this is correct so the computer will do both but if it's an if and an else if it'll just say okay we have if first and then else if and then else so you can see the difference if and if will directly run simultaneously but if you have a somewhat like an order checking you should use else if and that is all so that's if statements and i'm going to talk about the next topic which is advanced if statements and advanced if statements have additional operators which i think isn't too hard because there's only three types and it will definitely be mind-blowing because right now all you can see is oh okay we can only check it one by one one by one but once we once you actually learn about this additional three operators uh your mind will be blown because you possibilities can open up so the additional three i can't say it's comparing operators because it's no longer comparing I just say additional three uh if operators and the additional three is an and 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 then we have the like dash dash i guess and then we also have the exclamation mark and the and and here represents and or logical and and the dash dash is logical or and the exclamation mark is logical not and you might be wondering what is this logical 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 well essentially we know that if we have an if statement Actually, let me just comment all of this first because it is pretty annoying to have unwanted commands running. So let me just close that right here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me just close it like this and then remove this. And yeah, okay. Everything, as you can see, is commented because it is indicated with green. I'm just going to copy this to the bottom because that will help us understand further with the variables we already have. So we can see here if, and like normal, we have our number, our value, and then we have, let's just say, variable one. And then I just say variable one is less than variable two. And then this is what we normally would have with your current knowledge but now with the additional three if operators you can extend this statement by typing in and 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 then you can type another operator or another statement so let me just type it down here so essentially the end the logical and here or the additional three operators if operators are used to extend your statement so if we have a statement here because this is what we currently have and then if we use the additional three if operators, we can essentially add another statement. And then you can also add another statement and another statement. Or you can also combine the other statement like this and another statement. It can be like that. And essentially what is happening right now is, let me type this down first, give me a second statement then we have this if not statement not bracket statement and then we have the curly brackets as always because if always have a curly bracket at the end okay so the additional three if operators here 
it's like extending your statements that you put inside the if. So first of all, this statement here must be true. So if let's just say like this, if variable one is less than variable two, which is true, and then we put the and and here, this is trying to say or indicate to the computer that this statement must be true and this statement must be true for it to activate. And basically, it's just and. This statement here will just say this must be true and this must be true. Both must be true, then this if statement will run. And it could be multiple or more than two statements. It can be three, four statements. It can be endless. And it's up to you. And for number two, we have the dash dash, which says logical or. And you might have guessed that it's same with and. This statement can be true, and this statement can be false, and this if still runs because or is just saying that one of them is true, then it can run. And that's the logic here. So if we use an and here, both of them must be true because this is true and this is true, then the statement becomes true. But for or, if this is true and the other is false or true and true, it doesn't matter because as long as one statement is true, then the computer will directly run the if statement. And this also applies for else if and if. And you can always extend them using the logical and, logical or. Now, I think you're pretty familiar with the last one, which is the exclamation mark. And as I've said before, the comparing operators here, we have not equals to. And in programming, we can know that, or assume in Java, of course, that the exclamation mark is a not. So if this statement right here is true, and then we have an exclamation mark outside of it, then it's gonna flip what we expect. So we just say it's true. If this statement is true here, it gets flipped. So it becomes a false. And as we've learned before, everything inside of the brackets in, of the if here, which is this, must be true for the if to run. So this can be useful in many ways, and I'm sure you're thinking ways to use this right now. And this can also be false. So if this statement is false, it's going to get flipped, which means if this statement is false and there's an exclamation mark here, which says not, or just flips the expectation. So if it's false, then it becomes true, which means that the if statement can run. So for example here, I am going to try and teach you here what happened if we use the not. So variable one and variable two, and then let's just say system dot other print line. I'm gonna say it runs, okay? And then as always, end with a semicolon. For your information, the curly brackets here don't need semicolon, only the code inside of it needs semicolon. I'm gonna kill the terminal, run again, so that we can get a new terminal. And as you can see, it doesn't run. But what happens if we try to put a exclamation mark and then bracket this? And don't forget, there is a bracket whenever you're dealing with the exclamation mark because it's like a math equation where we put a multiplier outside and then we put x plus 3 like this. If we have this, then we will result or get 2x plus 6 because 6 is 3 times 2. And 2x is 2 multiplied by x. So as you can see, the multiply goes inside. So you should always have a... We should always write it down in that format, where the exclamation mark is outside, then we have a bracket. So anything inside of the bracket will be inversed or flipped. So as you can see here, we know that variable 1, which is 2, is never greater than... 5 because 2 is less than 5. But if we were to put the not logical not outside, as you can see, if we click on run, the code runs. And that's because if we do the statement right here, variable 1 is greater than variable 2, which is false. But then we put the exclamation mark outside of it, which becomes true. 
And if the statement is true, then it will run this code right here. And that is all for if statement logic. Now, before we continue, I like to discuss about how the examples that I've shown are only integers or int variables. And of course, if we use float, it also works because it's a number. And if we use float or integers, all of this will be available and double. The point is, if you use numbers, all of these comparing operators here will be available for your use because the compare will be, oh, okay, we're comparing numbers with numbers. And then, you know, we have greater than, if this number is greater than that number, then it's fine. And if it's less than a number, a number, then it's fine. But you might be wondering what happens if we use a text or maybe a, a Boolean or maybe a char or the five main Java variables, will it still work? Well, the answer is yes. And I'm going to actually explain to you about that right now. But before we continue, I'd like to prove to you that float also works because what's well, a number. And if we click on run here, it still runs, as you can see. Even though I'm not, you know, using a decimal because float stores decimal values, it still runs. You know what? Actually, let me just do this for you so that you guys can actually be proven that decimals can also work. And the point is, Numbers will always have full access towards all of this, comparing operators. But if we were to deal with strings, let me just comment this using the multi-line comment again. Okay, so we use string here. I just say text one equals to, let's just say hi. And we have another text two a dev code like this and then we try to make an if statement so if text one equals to text two and then we have the curly brackets and you might be wondering is this the right way i'm pretty sure that this is true because as we've discussed before that is how we write equals to that works for numbers and I'm pretty sure all the primitive data type which includes integer float char boolean and you might be wondering wait what was that term that I said before primitive data type primitive data type are data type which are originally provided by Java but to be honest string isn't a variable provided by Java originally it was created by someone someone smart enough to combine characters together which forms a text which is why string here is somewhat like a special variable because it's not originally made by java and someone actually used java to make string and later implemented into the java program by the java owner so essentially string wasn't invented before and a person actually made string using Java programming, which is why we can't use equals equals string itself has its own equals equal to, which is done by writing down text one dot equals. And then as you can see object and object. So you can just put bracket here, text, text two. And this dot equals here is also made by the same person who invented string and it's just a built in program now or keyword now in Java. But essentially this is unique because if you notice this before string has a capital letter in front, you know, the others does not. And that just indicates that string is literally a variable created by someone and Java just implemented it inside because it's so useful and many people have used this. If you're really interested with the history, you can of course search this up further, but I'm not going to be discussing much about that now and more to the logic right here. So if text one dot equal to text two, which is if we elaborate this with the same code as before, 
it's the same thing as saying text 1 is equal to text 2. And if we look at this, is it equals? No, it's not. So I'm just going to say system.printline text can also run like this. And the answer is false with this statement here because it's not equal to. For example, again, let's just change the height to def code, which means that it is equal to one another. Click on run and we can see that text can also run. So now you know that text can also be implemented inside of if statements and they use the special keyword dot called dot equals. And other than that, you can't really use anything. You can't really use all of these component operators for string because how can you say that a string is much greater than another string. You don't really, you really can't say that. Or how is a string less than another string? Or how is a string greater than or equal to? Or less than or equal to? String is a text and text don't have value. They just are text that we use to read. And that means that all of these operators right here can't be used except the dot equals here, which is unique towards string, and the exclamation mark, where we just say exclamation mark, brackets, and then brackets again. And if we just say text one is, let's just say different. Or you know what? Let's just do the same. If we do the same, the text can also run, will not run, because def code dot equal to def code is true. And then if we have the exclamation mark outside, it becomes false. So that's why here, as you can see, it does not run. And then that's for string. Let's try a character. And characters are unique because string is made from multiple characters combined together or the characters together to form a string. But the characters itself also acts like a number in itself because Java or the computer in Java can identify or have an index for every for every character and this is called the ASCII table and the ASCII table indicates all of the values for each character as you can see yeah so it also accounts for symbols as well, so it's pretty unique. And you don't necessarily need to remember all of this, of course, but it is truly unique that characters can work like numbers. So if we were to, of course, try to make character, let's just say my letter 1 and then equals to A, let's just do this A and then char my letter Two is equals to of course B, and remember that in characters we use the single quote, not double quote, because it's only one character. And then if we look at the ASTI table, we can see that A has a less value than B. So we're just gonna say if of course B or my letter two is greater than my letter one, which is supposedly true. I'm gonna say system dot out dot print line characters can characters actually have integer values. Click on run here and we can see that character actually have integer values. And this is true because as you can see B has greater value than A. So that is why B or my letter 2 is greater than my letter A. Or my letter 1, sorry. And yeah. Characters hold integer values inside of them. But string cannot because it's probably multiple characters combined together and it's pretty complex to actually get a value from it. So that's why it is pretty challenging to do so. And if we think about it in that way, and we... Think about a word like car and, r and rack. 
if we were to think about it in this way, then it will stay true because if we add C plus A plus R and then and then we have a value for instance X and then R plus A plus C is just the same thing as C plus A plus R because they're just rearranged. Even though in the human eye we say that they are not equal because the text is not equal to another text. And the computer will only just see this as integer values and they will simply add them and it's just the same thing. That's why string itself has a unique operate comparing operators called dot equals and yeah that's why we don't use the equal equal sign when we deal with text then we also have the last variable i think boolean and a boolean can only use equals equals and not equals because it can only hold true or false value and true or false don't have any integer in them so you can only use true or false so if you say boolean true or false wait let me just capitalize the word false equals to true so if true or false and remember that as long as the if statement is true we can just say if true or false is equals to true then this is the, uh, the print line to output boolean boolean can also run click on run here and we can see that boolean can also run and characters can actually have integer values is the example above and if we were to say false then it will not run and before I continue, I'd like to also point out that characters here can use all of the comparing operators because each character have their corresponding value in integers or numbers. So yeah, be free to use characters the way, the same way as integers. But Boolean can only be true or false, equals equals, and not equals. Like this would indicate true because true or false and you can say okay not not what not false so that means true and this is the same concept as the logical not but the difference is if it's not equal to then it will only convert the last value this is most commonly seen for boolean and integers and characters as well if you want to use characters so yeah that is all for the if statements and i'm probably going to ask you guys to do a challenge and the challenge will include the easy level medium level and hard level and the easy level will of course be easier than the rest so before I start typing down the challenge, I am just going to comment all this. Let's say challenge. We're going to start off with the easy level. And I'm going to write down everything first. And then once you are confident enough, you can start all of the challenges. But if you are stuck or confused on what to do, you can always on the video and see the answers so for the easy challenge we are just going to ask you guys to create a variable and of course for the easy challenge i'm going to pr be providing a lot of hints and then as it goes on it's going to be a little bit harder so i'm gonna ask you guys to make a variable it can be uh, anything you want but it has to be an integer variable and you can put any name so you're going to make an integer variable and then you're going to make another integer variable integer variable and this will be assigned to a value that you want and assigned to another value and then if the value is much if the first value or actually let me just name this variable one variable two if the variable one 
is greater than variable 2, then I want you guys to output variable 1 is larger than variable 2. So if only variable 1 is greater than variable 2, then it has to output variable 1 is larger than variable 2. If not, then you output variable 1 is smaller than variable 2. Okay? And let us assume that the values are not same. Okay. This is the easy challenge of today's video. And I'm going to also introduce the medium and hard challenge once we learn about user input. So try to pause the video right now and try to do the easy challenge first. Okay, so for the easy challenge, the answer is somewhat like this. Variable 1, so this is an integer, I'm going to make an int variable. So int, uh, let's make it easy, so let's just say my number. It doesn't matter what you call it, it can be my number, it can be anything you want, but I am going to specify it. Uh, let's just do something like new. So just say my challenge number, because it's a challenge. Let's just say the value is 5, and then int my challenge number 2 is equal to, let's just say, 10. And if my challenge number is greater than my challenge number 2, then we just say system dot print line. My challenge number is larger than my challenge number two and from here you can either use an else if because if this happens and then if this doesn't fire then this can give a shot which is the next condition which is my challenge number is less than my challenge yeah less than my challenge number two or you can use an else statement because you're definitely sure that that my cha that my challenge number is smaller than my challenge number two. So if we click on run right now, we get to see that my challenge number is smaller than my challenge number two. But let's just for example, change my challenge number to somewhat 11 and then click on run again and we get my challenge number is larger than my challenge number 2. And as I've said before, using the else if method is much better because you get to be much more control or you have much more control with this number. But the reason why I'm using else is because I've said that this value will be distinct or won't be the same because if I were to you know try to have the same number it'll say my challenge number is smaller than my challenge number two because this statement doesn't fire then the else statement will fire and if you use an else if you could have said something like uh, you can use the opposing statement of my of the if so you can just switch this to this and then you can say something like let me just copy and paste this because it's pretty much the same and if I click on run right now as you can see it's just the same thing and let me just comment this so that it doesn't activate at all. And yeah, it's just the same thing. Except that if it's a 10, because 10 is the same number. So if we just use 
like five again here you can see that my challenge number is smaller than so yeah you can either use an else if or an else and if you use an else if here you can use this else here to say if the number is asking for similar or the number can be same you can just say same number which is very important because if you use this you can say that 1010 10, which is the same number and as you can see it becomes same number because this if oh it doesn't fire this if oh it doesn't fire again and then else fires and it says same number that's why if you use an else you already have to accommodate all the things so that you don't get mistakes and the reason why i was so confident in using else was because i know that it has to be distinct number or i did mention in the instructions that the numbers will always be distinct but you can do this and there's nothing wrong with using the else if or using the else method that i've mentioned before okay so now we can talk about our final topic of today's video as well as the last two challenges which are going to be pretty difficult so when it comes to making a scanner or the user input device that we're gonna need we're gonna need a scanner and to do that we need to scroll to the very top go to the public class which is the first line i'm assuming you guys didn't mess anything with the public class here or just make sure that it's at the top of public class and what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a package import and you're gonna type in java.util which is short term for utilities and then you're gonna util dot scanner and this is how you import a specific java package but if you want to import the whole utilities you can use the asterisk sign and then semicolon and if you use the asterisk sign then it will import everything and if you don't need a few components it's much better if you use scanner so for this case because we're just going to learn about scanner not about packages we're going to use scanner there you go and then once you've done that we can go down here and start typing in our scanner code which can be written down in system in scanner wait actually i'm going to type in system out for system out of print line scanner so you get to see what the scanner will look like because i don't want you guys to get confused especially in this part here see we have the text here and i'm going to make a scanner so when we make a scanner we type in scanner and then the name of the scanner which is anything my scanner equals to new because we're going to make a new object for scanner and we're going to say system dot in and this code right here you don't need to understand about it now because you haven't learned about objects which i will discuss as the series progress but for the meantime, this is just how the code works, and you just need to remember the code as it is right now. And then to make a scanner or to type in a scanner, you just need to say my scanner dot next line, next int. And if you scroll down, you can see it has everything like next byte, next float, and yeah. So what I like to do is I type in next here and you can see next int, next boolean byte, double. So yeah, this int right here or like the keyword after next, so like next int, next line, indicates what data type you're going to need to type in. So if you type in my scanner dot next line, sorry, not next, next line, as you can see, string, next int, integer. Uh, my scanner dot next float you can say that next double you can say that and yeah basically you can put anything you want inside of the scanner but you have to remember that the data type that you are typing down 
like next in right here, needs to be an integer. So if you type in a, a text here, the output will be error. So let this, let's just see what happens right here. Click on run here, and then we get to see scanner, and then we have like this box right here where we can put our cursor down, and we can type in all numbers. So I just type in number here, and there you go. We're done with inputting a number, but does the computer remember it? No, it doesn't. It only reads it. Now, before I discuss about how the computer reads it and what to do so that the computer remembers it, let me tell you what happens if you put a text. You put a text, a text inside next it. And as you can see, input mismatch exception, which just tells us that if you type in next in, you really need to make sure that the value you input is an integer. That's why we have the next int. So keep that in mind. And then regarding whether or not the computer remembers the number or value that we input, to do that, we use a variable. So every time you have a scanner, it is best to have a variable in front of it. So like to say number input. By doing so, the number input will store the value that you input and then my scanner here is just like a, a software or like an application or a scanner to read the value that you input. So the value input to the computer will go through the scanner and then it will be stored inside the value or variable number input. And that's what is essentially happening. So if I system.out.println the number input, the number input will, or the value that we store will print out. You can see here, scanner, I'm just going to put 30. And as you can see below that, we print out 30. And that's how you store a value instead of variable, especially when it comes to user input. And this is how you do user input. And that's all. That's all the topics we've covered. And now just the challenges and for the medium level challenge it's going to be a pretty challenging one because you're going to use what you just learned right now like just now which is the the, the user input and for the medium level i'm going to ask you guys to make a code that allows the user to input money so user input money and then the computer will ask how will ask how many objects you want to buy assuming that each price of the object is three three dollars or units or any anything and when i say money you can just put in the number so you can use an integer and that's a hint and then from there you can see you want to output the amount of objects the person can purchase so try to do the medium challenge so pause the video right now and try to do the challenge okay so once you've done the challenge if you did it Great job. If you don't know how to do it, it's fine. After all, this is a medium level challenge as well as you need to implement your scanner, which is a new a new thing for you. So yeah, but the answer is, of course, I'm going to copy paste my scanner because, well, you already, you know, type in scanner, my scanner equals the new scanner system dot in. Then to store the amount of money, we just need to make an integer money and just say my scanner dot next int because we want to store the money and then after it stores the money you ask the person to to say how many objects you want to buy so objects just say amount 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 is easy to remember amount my scanner dot next int and then We just need to remember 
that the total money needed because each object is how many three units so we're just gonna type in amount multiplied by three that means that the amount put it which is for example the user type in five let me want to buy five objects so five times three which is 15 and then all we need to do is just out output system the out of print line the and purchase with money left so we're just gonna type in our money minus the total money needed and I think that was partially my fault for not telling you that you need to calculate the money left but yeah you need to calculate the money left and I apologize for that mistake anyway if you did somewhat your logic until here you did great so for instance we're just gonna say we have a hundred dollars and then we have what's the amount let's just say we want to buy what's a good number 10 so that should be 30 so we get 100 minus 30, which is 70. And as you can see, this is correct. And that's the medium challenge. And finally, we are going to the hard challenge, which is, in my opinion, not going to be a difficult one if you use all the concepts that we've learned. So hard challenge. The first thing is we have a variable. Uh, I want it to be an integer variable integer I'm gonna name this variable one variable two and then uh, it's going to be telling us if variable one or right now I'm not gonna say that if variable one is larger than variable two then we are going to say variable one is larger than variable two and this is hard because you have to remember the previous concepts of the previous video. And then for the hard challenge, you also need to print out if it's smaller. So you can say variable one is smaller than variable two. And then finally, if it's the same, you have to type in value of variable one is, you know, uh, the real value, the person input. Of course, this is going to be input and this is going to be input. And then is equal to the value of variable two and then the value and that's all that is all for the hard challenge to so pause the video right now and try to do the challenge okay so if you actually finished or made the challenge, great job because this is reusing your previous concept as well as the concepts that we've learned. So it's only hard because you have to use all the concepts we've learned. And to do this, of course, you are going to make a scanner and you don't necessarily need to make the scanner with the same name. So that's something I want to clarify. Scanner can be like my scanner too. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be even my scanner. It can be like scan. Doesn't matter. So yeah. Anyway, I'd like to make this as general as possible so that it's easy for you to for you guys to understand. Scanner my scanner two equals to new scanner system dot in, and then that's our scanner already. And then for variable one, we can just say system the out print line. Maybe I'm going to introduce to you guys to making the text much more clear. So you can just say variable one, and then you can just type in my scanner two dot next in, and then I'm going to make sure that I keep this inside of variable one, and then this is being copy paste because we are going to have the same code. The reason why it's wrong is because it is the same name with the previous variable and then 
that is all of our input already done now it's our logic here and i'm pretty sure that i've already discussed this before in the easy challenge because i want to see if you guys can implement it and see it for better use so if variable one if variable two it's greater than we just print out variable one is greater than variable two of course you can uh use additional you know values here like i did in the same in the same output but that is if you want to maybe that that could be your assignment after the video if you can try and do this and i'm going to guide you all the way variable two and then system dot out uh, print line variable one is greater than variable two which is not true it has to be less than and then our last one which is same so i'm just going to make this else and we're going to type in system out of our print line and this is the challenging part in my opinion is if you can make the string connection because we need to put in the value that they input or you input specifically so variable one or let me just copy paste the text here so value of variable one is and then remember we need to put space and then put plus uh which is our variable one plus is and then space is equal to the value of variable two uh, space variable two and then uh, equal to variable value variable two which is uh and remember that the text that i'm using right now doesn't have to be 100 percent same and i don't mind if you just change the text here but what matter is whether or not you use the variable here inside of the printout as well as the text so you need to use the previous concept and if you don't know how to do this check out the previous video because i've already covered that and then variable two plus variable two click on a run right now and we get ourselves variable one three variable two two Three is greater than two. Yes, and that is the logic. Now, before I continue, you can also elevate this by trying to use print. Because as we discussed before, print line is like you print this text and then enter, and then the next thing happens. If we use print, let's see what happens here. If we use print, Apparently, it will be variable 1, and beside of it, we have our number. So we input 3, and variable 2, 2. It's the same code, but you can see that the user input is merged to the side, and that is because of print. And if you use print line, remember that it prints out the text, and then click on enter, and then it'll print out the next command, which is the user input. So if you use print, you can put the user input decide the variable and take note that next here next int or almost everything in scanner using next will be like a enter so it can substitute for the print line as you can see here instead of variable to beside here it enters it so yeah you can use print and then use the scanner to act as the print line and let me show you what will happen if we have the same value so i just say three and three variable one value of variable one is three is equal to the value of variable two which is three and that is essentially all and this is the use of our multiple variables when it comes to printing out text and variables so I'm going to revise by telling you that there are three types of if and each type of if are used separately if 
else if and else have their own respective order but if and if don't follow the order or it's more to whose statement is true will be activated but if else if and else are in one straight order we have comparing operators which you are probably already familiar now because we've used a lot of them in the challenges and this is equal to not equals greater than less than greater than or equal to or less than or equal to then if this is of course less than less than and do take note that you can have endless amount of else if inside of the order so if else if and then else if and then else if and then else if and etc and etc and etc and it's fine because the else if will follow the order still but what's important is you can only have one else then we have the additional three if operators which allows you much more flexibility when it comes to statement and statement statement and statement and not statement and you know that now that string can be used using the dot equals char can be used using the characters and the not equals to the exclamation mark here opposes the true meaning which means that it flips the answer so from true it becomes false and false becomes true and this is your easy challenge which is pretty much the same concept with your hard challenge but just much more basic and doesn't implement user input and then this is how you make a user input which is the use of scanner and don't forget to import the java.util.scanner because if you don't import it the built-in java doesn't have it at the first place and you can't use scanner and then you also got to learn about the print which is a way for you to make sure that the text is much better because the print merges the user input together in one line which just makes it so much cleaner in my opinion and you got the basic concepts of if statements so i think that covers up today's video i think it's pretty long enough and i hope that you get to enjoy understand more and i'll see you in the next video